So they may ask you to transform trig graphs. Now we talked all about transformations in the four videos on graph transformations in the graphs and transformations set of videos. If you want a more in-depth discussion, please look at those videos. Um, but this is an overview of all the transformations you need to know. But if you want to move on to this kind of bit of the topic, you kind of need to know about this um, these transformations in advance. Um, basically you have two translations at the top, two stretches that squeezes in the middle and two mirrorings um, at the bottom with inside and outside the function um, transformations. Um, you should know these um, already. Again, go back to those videos um, if you need a refresh or you have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's start with translation. So here's a typical exam question where they want us to sketch y is equal to sin x plus 3 in the interval given. So in order to do these questions, you first have to consider the original untranslated graph. So this is just the sin graph. Now, when I was starting out, and as I still do now, I always draw the original trig graph out very lightly in order to make the transformations easier, and I recommend this tactic. So in this case, it will just be the normal sin graph. I think that really helps. Um, what you'll usually find in exam questions is that, um, in fact, 99% of the time, is that they will ask you for like a part A to draw out the original sin graph in this example. So therefore, you don't need to kind of lightly kind of sketch out. You can just sketch it out as part of your answer in order to get marks. So that's quite Quite good and th that's why they do it because it's quite a technique it really helps in order to do it so let's just sketch out the sin graph so this is going to start from 0 and come up to 1 at 90 and then come down to 0 at 180 down to minus 1 at 270 and then up to 0 at 300 and 60. And now we have the plus 3 on the end. Hopefully you should recognise this as the form y is equal to f of x plus 3. Hopefully you realise this um, just by looking at it. So all this means is we should shift the whole graph up by 3 and the way you can base this on is that the 0 here is going to become 3 because you add 3 to it. The 1 is going to become 4 and the minus 1 is going to become 2 and you just base your points around that. So the new 0 is the 3 and it's going to go up to 4 at 90 degrees so it's going to be looking like this here and then it's going to come back down to 3 at 180 so it's going to look like this and then it's going to come down to 2 at 270 and then it's going to come up to 3 at 360. And then that is the translated graph, y is equal to sin of x plus 3. And that's the answer. Here's another translation question. So as I said before, I think it's helpful to draw the original untranslated graph. So in this instance, the cos graph. To save time, I've drawn the graph already, but learn how to sketch the sin, cos and tan graphs off by heart, as this is a good tactic, in my opinion, for the translations. OK, so this question is specifically mentioned on the spec, where you need to sketch y is equal to cos x plus 30 in the interval uh, minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. Okay, so hopefully you can recognise that this is of the form y is equal to f of x plus 30. It's inside the uh, function. 30 is quite a big number, but because it's um, it's an angle, it's actually not. Um, so the way you would approach this is because it's inside the function, remember it has the opposite effect that you would um, expect it to have, so it shifts to the left by 30. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start with the highest point, which is here, 1. So it's going to be shifted to the left by 30, which I'll say is probably about here. So I'll start from here and start going left. So I'll start from here and go down like this, and I'll say it goes about here. This is about 30 across from the minus 90. And then it goes down like this, like so. And then we do the other side. So it starts and then goes down like this. And it goes about here, I'll say. It comes down. And it hits minus 1. And then it goes a tiny bit more up as it would normally because it's minus 30. And this is the graph of y equal to cos of x plus 30. 
However, we need to label the uh, points of intercept with the axes. The x uh, coordinates are quite easy because remember it's just shifted to the left by 30. So this one is going to be minus 90 minus 30, which is just minus 120 degrees. And this one is 90 minus 30, which is just 60 degrees. The y intercept is a tiny bit more difficult, but remember that the y intercept is always when x is equal to 0. So therefore, when x is equal to 0, it's going to be y is equal to cos of 0 plus 30, which is just equal to cos 30 which if you put into your calculator is equal to root 3 over 2. So the y-intercept is root 3 over 2 and that's the final answer. Okay, so here is a stretch question. Hopefully you realise that y is equal to 2 sin x of the form y is equal to 2f of x. I've already pre-drawn the y is equal to sin x. So it's an outside the function stretch. That means it will um, be times 2 in the y direction. The way that you approach this is just base it around um, here and then just everything that becomes 1 becomes 2 and so on. So start it from here and it's going to go to 2 at 90. So it's going to be like this. And then it's going to come all the way back down to 180 at 0. And then it's going to come down to minus 2 here. So it's going to be like this at 270. And then it's going to come back down here. Then for the other side, it's the exact same, where it's going to come down to minus 2 for minus 90. And then it's going to come up to 0 for 180. I'll draw that a bit more accurately. And then it's going to come up to 2 and then down back to 0, where y is equal to 2f of x. And all of the um, coordinate axes intercepts are the same, so you don't need to do any more labeling. So this is the final answer. So here's an inside the function stretch. Hopefully you realize it's of the form y is equal to f of 2 of x. I've already drawn in the tan um, graph and again this is an example that is specifically mentioned on the spec so because it's inside the function that means that we're going to be squeezing everything by 2 along the x-axis so if you do this this is going to be squeezed by 2 then this is going to be squeezed by 2 it gets after work it's a bit difficult to follow the squeezing so you just kind of have to use the fact of like period periodicity and it repeats every 180 so then this is going to be like this then this is going to be like this, this down here, and this comes up here, and then finally this comes up to zero, and this is the graph y is equal to tan of 2x. How to draw in the asymptotes, remember the asymptotes are also translated and squeezed, so there's one that's squeezed here, one that's squeezed here, there's also going to be one here and another one here and with the points of intersection we don't really need to label them because they're already labeled at 90 180 270 and there's one at 360 as well and that's the final answer so here's a quick so here's just one mirror question where it's of the form y is equal to f of minus x so it's an inside the function mirror and so therefore it's a reflection in the x axis so the way you do this is just start from one of these, remember it's a reflection in the x-axis, so it's going to be like this, then like this, and then here, and then here, and just reflect them all in the x-axis. like that and obviously all the asymptotes are still the same and the points of uh, intersection y is equal to tan of minus x and that's the final answer. Now really quick A level students only they could ask you to do multiple transformations for AS students you're not required to know this we went over how to approach multiple transformations in part 4 the graph transformations titled multiple transformations in the graphs and transformation set of videos but basically you just follow the order that affects x so hopefully you realize that this is of the form y is equal to 2f of x over 2 which if you want to you can write it as 2f of half x and basically the way multiple transformations works uh, you, you follow the order it affects x so this transformation will occur first and then this one so the first 
one that will occur is the half inside the function stretch, which it's half, so remember it has the opposite effect, so this will actually stretch it in the x direction by 2. So if we start from up here, it's going to look like this, then it's going to come down like this, then up like this, and then like that, and then exact same on the other side. Then that is y is equal to cos of x over 2. And then we just apply the other transformation, the 2, 1, to this transformation. So it's a stretch in the y direction. It's going to times everything by 2. So it's just going to stretch everything by 2. So this 1 will become 2, etc. So if we start it from up here, it's going to be like this. And then like this. And then it's going to come down to minus 2 here. And up like this. And then finally up to 2 like this. And then same on this side. And then like that. And this is the graph y is equal to 2 cos of x over 2. Um, the... Um, x-intercepts are already uh, labelled and so are the y-intercepts, so we don't need to do anything like that. And that is the final answer. Okay, so here's a question on trigonometric graphs and transformations, so pause the video, have a go, and I'll go for the answer in about five seconds. Okay, so for this question, first start by drawing the just normal tan graph, which comes up from zero like this, with an asymptote at 90, then up to zero from here and then like this and then back up like this with an asymptote here and here this is y is equal to tan x I would always label them and then it is a inside the function stretch of the form y is equal to f of half of x so that means remember it has the opposite effect so as it's half it's going to stretch it by two along the x-axis so it's going to stretch this bit here up to 180 like this and then this bit is going to be like this for this part here the asymptote is going to be here and this is y is equal to tan of half x all the intercepts of the coordinate axes are labeled so this is just a final answer